the dolls in your dollhouse getting ready for a summer camp out? Do they need a sleeping bag or two? Join me and see how easy it is to make a sleeping bag for the dollhouse. we need to cut some fabric. We have two pieces of fabric, our lining and our outside fabric. And I usually make the lining out of a flannel and the outside out of a cotton. And these are cut six by six and a half. You'll need some kind of filler, quilt batting, or what I'm using here is fleece, like you'd make a fleece blanket out of. And this is cut five and a half by six. And you need two pieces of really narrow elastic. This is, I think it's eighth inch. And these are cut four and a half inches each. So we need to do a little prep work. First thing we're going to do is we are going to take one of our pieces of fabric and we are going to go to the wrong side and lay our fleece onto it. Now there's going to be about a quarter inch all around and that's what we want. And we may or may not even catch this into our seam. It doesn't really matter. What we are going to do leave it like that and we're going to pin it now you're going to have to be careful of these pins these pins are going to stay in for a couple of steps and it's really easy to poke yourself with them but this is the easiest way to make sure that the our filler our batting turns with our sleeping bag and i am leaving one of the six inch or six yeah six inch edges open this is the end that's six inches across. This is the six and a half. All right, so that's ready. Now, on one of these narrow, one of these pieces, I don't need to do that part yet. Now we're going to put these right sides together and our pins now, oops, our pins now are on the inside. They're gonna be inside of there because they have a job to do. Now we're gonna pin everything together, being careful not to poke ourselves with these pins that are inside. And we're going to pin everything together. We're at the sewing machine and I've got a quarter inch foot on my sewing machine. Now this edge that we didn't pin, we are going to leave open. So we're going to start it right at the bottom here. And we are going to make our seam. Now these pins that we put on this side, we can take them out as we go. We don't want those to... Um, and be really careful when you're coming up to these pins that are holding the fleece onto the outside fabric. So make sure you're not going to run over those. Needle down. I'm going to go a couple more. I'm going to go one more stitch. And this isn't, you know, this isn't an exact science. You can just make a narrow seam. It doesn't have to be precisely a quarter inch. As you can see, the, the fleece doesn't come all the way to the top here. That's why I want to have it pinned in from the other side. side out and by putting those pins in there it makes it really easy to keep that fleece where we want it. I'm going to read 
pin, so I'm pinning through all the layers just to keep everything in place for our next couple of steps. Now for my sleeping bag, this is you know, obviously the flannel see inside, so this is my outside. All right, now I need to figure out where the center of this is. So now our sleeping bag is how wide? It is approximately five inches. So we're going to go over just over two and a half, right around two and a half. And I have some, this is some special chalk to use with the sewing machine, but if you don't have this, you could use a pencil, just go really lightly. If you're using a pencil, I would sew from the inside, not the outside. And that is going to be impossible to see. So we'll try this again. Might help if I actually have it centered. Let's get this. Let's try it on this side. I'll move all my pins in here. Then now I've got a yellow line I can see, and hopefully the cam hopefully I did that dark enough the camera can pick it up. Let's move these pins inside. I like to know where my pins are when I'm sewing, if at all possible. I don't like to sew with them on the back side of my fabric if I can avoid it. All right, now, for the next step, we need to position the sewing machine back. I'm going to take off my regular foot and put on, got my quarter inch foot, put on the regular foot. Now I start at the top, and I'm going to follow that line with just a nice row of stitching. That will help us to keep the batting in place. It will also allow the sleeping bag to fold a little nicer. I looked out on the other one I made. It had a design I could follow, so I knew exactly where to go. Didn't have to draw a line. Scissors. My scissors are hiding behind my sewing machine from me. So the camera could see I moved this, my sewing machine to a different location. Now everything's in the way. Now. We are going to take out all these pins. Now remember that elastic we had on the outside of your sleeping bag. We're going to pin it. And I'm just going to eyeball this. I'm going to try and get it about the same distance from this edge as I am from this seam that I just sewed this top stitching line. And I like to make sure that the elastic sticks past the end of the fabric here. I'm actually using two pins. Oops, if I do it that way, I'm you now I'm not gonna move my I'm not gonna take my pins out on this one. I'm gonna have to be very careful to not hit my pins. But this needs to stay um, pinned. Because it's real easy for this elastic to slip out of the seam. And if it slips out of the seam, it's not going to work. All right. Now, we are folding our sleeping bag right sides in. This was on the right side. This is our right side. This is our lining side. And we are going to pin this together so nothing moves while we're sewing. And I've got so many pins in there, the pins don't want to go. And I am using my regular machine foot, not my quarter inch foot for this step, so that I can have a little bit wider seam than I would if I used my quarter inch foot. doesn't want to feed because it's so thick. And I'm going pretty slow because I don't want to hit those pins at high speed. If I hit the pins at high speed that are holding that elastic, I could break my sewing machine. I could either break the needle, which wouldn't be too bad, or I could actually mess up the, um, the timing on the machine. So I try to be really careful. When I get to this edge, 
I'm going to back up and I'm actually going to use a locking stitch way back here. Alright, and that's all we need to do at the, sewing at the sewing table. So let me move the camera back to the craft table and right, we can so do the nasty uh, craft table. We're going to turn these right side out and this right side out. And don't worry about this seam. We're going to hide this because the bottom part of our sleeping bag will be sewed shut. Um, we are going to make this so that it looks like it's zipped up part way. So if you want to display it with the dolls in it, you can. I'm going to start my needle down there. Now I've got a, just some sewing thread. This is white. You could use a color that matches your sleeping bag better, but I grabbed the white one and this is a light enough color. It's fine. Now I'm going to try and pick up the outside of my stitch. I'm going to go over here. Now the bottom is going to be a little bit on the messy side and that's okay. Hopefully you can kind of disguise that in your display. And if I wasn't doing this on video, I would probably take a lot more time to sew this together neatly. But it's hard on video to um, get this sewed together nicely. And it's up to you how far up you have your, your uh, sleeping bag sewn shut. Um, our next step will be to add our faux zipper over the top of our stitching. So it will kind of disguise our stitching a little bit. And um, I mean, if you wanted to, you could do this all the way up the side, I guess, and have it just be permanently shut. But I want to make it so that it can be used. So you can either have it rolled up for storage, or you know, laying it by the campground, or you can put the dolls in it. And I'll show you that at the end when everything is all finished up and our glue from our next step or two will have to dry. So I'm going to go up a ways. Like I said, that's up to you. Now if you want to do this in 1 6 scale, just take the measurements and the measurements for all of the components of this project will be listed in the blog. Um, if you want to make this for a larger scale doll like a Barbie, um, easy to do. Just double the measurements. Um, you might need, um, on the next step, I'll, sh I'll give you some alternatives for that for a larger scale. But this is, and if you want to go smaller, if you want, if you do 1 24th scale, go for it. Just cut it down. Make it smaller. You'll have to do a little math to change scale, but that's okay. We're not scared of math here, right? Alright, I think that's about as far as I want to go. So I'm going to tie my thread off. And cut it off close so it doesn't show. Now, we're almost done. Our next step, I have some tangled up over here. I have some metallic gold embroidery floss. Um, is that what the color is actually called? It's actually a DMC embroidery floss. And I believe it was actually just called metallic gold. And we want quite a long piece of this. We want enough that it will go, a double length will go that way and this is plenty. Okay. We're going to waste a little. That was good. I cut the wrong end. Okay. Yeah. More than enough to do. And we'll trim this to size later. Now this stuff likes to come apart. It's unlike regular embroidery floss that stays together pretty well. This is really hard to manage. So our first step I'm going to put a little glue out. And by the way, you want at least two wet wipes for this next part of this project. You don't want to get glue on the fabrics. You want to do as, be as careful as possible and wipe that up right away 
but we are going to glue this on to our sleeping bag. And the first step I do is I go through, and yeah, it makes it a little stiffer, but it also holds it together. And I'm going to actually let this dry a little bit and set up so that my floss stays together when I'm trying to work with it. And it's relatively hot. As my son said the other day, it was about a bajillion degrees here. We're having a hot wave, heat wave. And for where I live, that's unusual. The last couple of summers, we've had really hot summers, which is pretty unusual for here. One thing I do want to do before I leave this to dry, though, I'm going to fold it in half. I'm not going to go very far. But I want to get the very end bent. This part is the hardest part to get right. And yeah, there's my. That's one of my locking tweezers. I should have gotten my locking tweezers out before I started and I'm knocking things down. There's a pair. And I'm actually going to use these two. There. I want to get that glued together. Now, this part needs to dry. Kind of separate up here. You don't want this to glue together. It's okay if the bottom part glues together, but you don't want this top end to glue together. So I want this glue to dry. I'm going to let it set for, oh, probably about 15-20 minutes, and then I'll be back. Alright, so this has had, oh, probably 5 or 10 minutes to kind of set up. I went and checked my Facebook. Alright, now these, we need to pull our little elastic things out of the way. And I am using tacky glue straight from the bottle for this. I find it's easier to get, because you need enough glue on in this little seam area um, to hold the floss. And I find trying to put it on with a tool, I just don't get enough glue. I'll we'll take this part. And we're going to lay this, and this now makes it look like we've got a zipper. A zipper in our sleeping bag. Shut. No. Wipe your fingers off on a wet wipe. Because, you, like I said, you don't want to get glue. There, now I'm going to see. I want to glue them together up to about there. Really hoping I'm getting this on one camera or the other. Okay. Now I like to stop at this point where the fabric is no longer sewed and just give that a couple more minutes and let it kind of set up because we don't want to pull this off, but I don't want to leave it because you're going to have to keep kind of pushing that down into the glue. This, this floss doesn't like to cooperate with this and sometimes I'll take some of the floss and I'll thread it into a needle and I'll take little stitches that I kind of hide just to help hold some of this, but hopefully I can get it glued on today. Just a few minutes, so I'm going to... You know, I'm going to turn the camera off and let this set up, and then I'll be back All yet right. again. I think I've got the glue set. It's not dry, but it's set enough that I can move on without this falling apart. Now we're going to run another bead of glue. This is why we have the floss separated now into the two pieces. This is why we fold it in half down at the bottom 
So we can bring our zipper up. And we want to be right in that seam where the um, two pieces of fabric join. So it looks like our zipper comes out. And it's kind of hard to tell for sure if you've got it on the seam with the glue there because the glue is white. So I'm hoping that I've got it in the right spot. And then just trim it off at the top. Take a little more glue. Make sure that end is glued down. And you probably have to go back and re-glue the ends just to make sure they get glued in. We'll do the same thing. So I can have this where you can see it. I think that's the hardest part of this project is trying to get it, or with a lot of the projects that I tape, is trying to get them where the camera can see and where I can still see what I'm doing. But there we go. Let's just staying in. So we'll let that glue dry. I do have another one that I made. So let me get this off to the side and let's get out this one. I made a green one too. This is this one turns out a little shorter because I made a mistake when I was making it. So I made it first to see how to do it. And uh, but you see, because we leave it open. Our little camper there can curl up in his sleeping bag. And I'll show you what these are for now. We very carefully roll up our sleeping bag. Make sure your glue is completely dry. And then, and I think usually when I was making these before, I did these with black elastic. If you've got black elastic, that would probably be best. But I didn't have any in black. And then we've got a rolled up sleeping bag. Um, I'll get this dry and uh, get some photos for the, the front of this and take a picture for the blog post. Be sure and check the blog. There's always more information and I will give the um, measurements for how, how big everything was and also some hints for trying to turn this into a Barbie size sleeping bag instead of a 112 scale. Because I know there's a lot of you out there that do Barbie size not 112 that watch my videos and read my blog. So I hope you enjoyed this project, um, and I'll talk to you next week. Bye.